Hello, I'm Carl Rowland with Sherline Products. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over threading and we're going to use the conversation program. Um, so a couple things before we get started. Your CAD CAM system is going to have threading capabilities um, for threading cycles. I recommend that for the threading, you actually use the conversation program that is on the MASO. Uh, the reason for this is part of their software is they've got it so that you can tell it either zero degrees for infeed or 29 degrees. So for your finer threads, zero degrees is fine. But at zero degrees, that means you're cutting with both sides of your insert on every thread. And as you go deeper and deeper, the cut gets larger and larger. Okay, when you use 29 degrees, which is what most people want to use when they're cutting single point threads, the insert is actually stepping in at a 29 degree angle on each successive pass. And the majority of your thread is being cut only with the lead edge of the insert. So this is a, a, a lot better way to cut, especially your, your larger pitch threads. The next one, we've just had some major software changes and improvements. And one of the improvements was on your on the optical encoder, it's got one point on here that reads the index so that your threading cycle will start at the same point every time so you don't cross thread. The original software was set up just to read that one mark every revolution. And there was some there were some minor um, problems with the tracking. Right now they've changed their software in a few in a few ways and, and one of the changes is that now the software reads five points per revolution on this. So if the tracking is spot on. Uh, you'll see when we do magnified view of the actual threading passes, it's it's going right on track with the previous pass. The next one is your you know, this is our Sherline lathe. This is our new ball screw lathe and it has the high torque stepper motors on it. Whether you have the high torque stepper motors or the standard two amp stepper motors, the fastest that the stepper motor can go is 32 inches a minute. That's max speed, okay? Something to understand with stepper motors, and this is all stepper motors, is that the highest torque is at the lower RPM range. When you get up to the 32 inches a minute, that's basically for rapid moves for positioning your tool. That is not for cutting, okay? So if you program your RPMs too high, then you're going to either exceed the ability of the stepper motor, and it's gonna skip steps right away, or you'll actually be making your cuts at the top end of the RPM range, which is the low torque area of your stepper motor, okay? So, um, what we've got here, we've got brass, it's 3 8 brass, and we have our uh, threading and grooving insert with a threading insert in it, and it's on the front side. And we're sticking out about 1.1. I'm gonna cut a 32 thread on 3 8 uh, 3 8 32 is not a common size thread, but that's the material I have, and that's the thread I wanna cut just for show and tell. So, on the conversation, we're going to click on F5. Right up here, description, we're going to say thread video date uh, 6 8 20. Output joke G code name is just going to be THRD BID. So I'm going to click on the first one, double click, whoop, double click, and it gives you the options. Uh, what I like to do is uh, do a, do a uh, turn first so that the outside is cleaned up. This is rough stock. And when you touch off on it, you can see I touched off on this one already. And it's only cleaning up on half of it. So it, I, I don't use a different tool. It's just this threading tool. So I'm going to do a, a turn, an OD turn with the threading tool. And then I'm going to thread it. So I'm going to click on OD turn. Title is just going to be turn. Tool number three, uh, spindle delay. I'm going to put in 3,000. That's that number is for milliseconds. How much of a delay? Roughing RPMs. We'll go with 2,000. And I'm not going to I'm not going to do a rough and finish. It's just going to be a finish. But we'll put 2,000 and 2,000. 
roughing feed, five inches a minute. 5.0, finish feed, I'll go two inches a minute. The initial diameter is 0.375. Tool clearance on the face, I'm going to go 50 thousandths. Roughing OD, I'm going to go 0.375. Finish OD, oh I'm sorry, roughing depth of cut, I'm going to go point, I'm going to go 10 thousandths. Finish depth of cut, I'm going to take 5 thousandths off, so I'm just going to go 5 thousandths. Finish diameter, we're going to go from 375 to point three seventy. Okay. Z start point is going to be zero, and the end point I want to thread half inch deep, so I'm going to turn it back minus 0.6. So that's, and we'll save that. Okay, so my my wizard file name is going to be T H R D B I D thread video. I'm going to hit enter. It took the name. If I had Given it a name and had a dash or a period or something like that in there that it didn't like, it would not take the name and you'd have to pick something else. So it's good with that. I'm going to click on Save Wizard. And Wizard is saved and post G code and it posts it. If I go to my load program, I could call it up right now and it would just show you that, that turning operation. So I just did the turn. Now I'm going to go to um, Operation 2, double click, and I'm going to go to Thread. This one we're just going to call THRD Thread. It's tool number three again. Spindle delay time, I'm going to go 3000 still. Something to keep in mind the RPM, if I'm at 2800 when I'm turning, and then I go to threading and I bring it down to say 300. Uh, it's going to take a little more time to, to get from 2800 down to 300. The, the wider the, the RPM difference is, the longer it's going to take for the spindle to get down to that new RPM. So you might have to go 4000 or 5000 in order for it to be threading at the correct RPM when it takes the first pass. It's a clockwise thread, it's going to be right handed. Depth of cut, I'm going to go 2 thousandths. A uh, spindle RPM. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to go 500. We recommend for most threads about 300. Okay, if I take to calculate out what my feed is at 500, if I take 500 times the pitch, which is 0.03125, the actual feed is going to be just over 15 inches a minute. So at 15 inches a minute, that's almost Right, right smack dab in the middle of the RPM range that my stepper motor is capable of. So that's that, that should be a, a good ratio right there. The pitch, 0.03125. Uh, in feed, I'm gonna go with a 20, so you have a choice of zero or 29. If you pick any other angle, it's not gonna work. So your choices are only zero in feed or 29 degree in feed. So 29.0 for my in feed. Tool clearance in the uh, X axis, I'm gonna go 50 thousandths. Initial diameter, we turned it down to 0.370. Final diameter, the, uh, the, the diameter difference from major diameter to minor diameter is about 30 thousandths. So we're going to punch in 0.340. That's for a 32 pitch thread. The lead on the length. You need to have some lead going into the thread. It takes a turn or two for the threading tool uh, feed to get in sync with the RPM. So I'm going to go with 0.2. Z start point is going to be zero, the front of the part. Z end point is going to be minus 0.5. Okay, I'm going to hit save again, then I'm going to save wizard, and I'm going to go post G code, and now if I go back to my MDI page, and then I go to load program, I'm going to call up and look at my program. You have two programs that are shown here, you have, you have threadvid.wiz and you have threadvid.nc. 
the thread, if I punch on the thread uh, bid.wiz, it's going to go right back to the conversation program so I can change it or in, add tools or whatever I want to do to it. If I go to the NC, that's the program that I'm going to run. So I just clicked on the .nc load program and you can see the yellow line is my turning operation and it's starting at zero. You've got a dotted line going across which represents the front of your part. And then these are my threading passes and you can see that each one is stepping in at a 29 degree angle for the next pass. So the actual uh, 29 degree angle is all in the software. It's a step in and a cut, step in and a cut. Okay. So right now, we, I've already described my tool on the tool page. I've already touched it off, so all of that is done. So now I'm going to go to Program MBI. I'm going to hit Rewind, and I can start running my program. I'm going to go single block, go one step at a time, just to make sure we don't crash anything here. And I'm going to start clicking on the Cycle Start button. It's just my 2,000 RPM, and you can see it settling out at 2,000. Okay. okay, I've got my feed hold and also the escape is feed hold. So if it looks like it's going to crash, I can hit feed hold at any time. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep clicking it. That's our, this is going to be our first pass. Just doing a turning operation and it's just cleaning up the outside. If I was doing a part where I was turning this down a lot smaller, then I would use a turning tool to turn this. But for this video, there's no sense in, in having two tools doing it. Obviously, this finishes quite fine using the threading tool. Okay, it already did that fine. I'm gonna take it off a single block and I'm gonna just hit cycle start. And there's my RPM change. It should shift out to the 200 thousands. All right, and we're making some nice passes here. So I'm gonna let it take about three or four passes and then I'm gonna stop it and we're gonna zoom in on the thread so you can see how the tracking looks. So that's three, four, Six. Okay, right now I'm going to hit feed hold. Okay, so we'll stop right there and we'll set the cameras up so you can actually see the zoom in on the threading insert. Right now I've got feed hold on. I'm just going to hit cycle start and take off right where it left, left off at. And you can see the tracking on our other shot here. And you can see the chip coming off of the lead edge of the insert with just a hair off of the back and that tracking is spot on. Okay, so our thread is done, 32 threads per inch, it's a nice clean looking thread. Um, a couple other points, uh, what we do down in the shop when we actually cut the thread for the spindle nose on our headstock spindle and most of our other threads, we start off with the, the cleanup pass to begin with. You turn it to the correct diameter and then you do your threading pass. And then what we do is uh, basically a spring pass, okay? So if I want a really nice thread, then what I would do is have another turning operation and I would just bring it in a thou so it's just enough to clean up the, uh, the outside edge of the thread. And then what I would do is copy the last two lines out of the threading program and just make that a program in itself and just have it come in and just make two cleanup passes on the threads. So you're doing a turn, a rough thread, a finished turn, a finished thread. And you know, in milling they call it a spring pass. The same thing goes for your turning and threading operations. Um, if I were to, let's, we'll take this guy out of here and the other one is your 
your conversation threading cycles, it gets it goes to the clearance point in the X and Z and that's where it stops. So most of the time I'll go in and edit the program and I'll actually, at the end, instead of having it stop 200 thousandths, I'll tell it to move two inches. So then I can, I can get in there and measure. Okay, so that's a, just another tip to add to it. Um, if I go and do a threading cycle, so I go back to the conversation, I am going to change my RPMs from 500, well, I'm gonna change it from 500 to 700, and I'm gonna change my pitch to 0.05, 50 thousandths per rev. And that should put me over 32 inches a minute. So I'm just gonna show you this so you can see what happens if you do exceed the limits of your stepper motor. Hit save. Save, post G code. Okay, I'm going to go to load files. Drag these in C, load file, and rewind and run. So it's going to cut air, but. So it's doing, doing the turning right now. Okay, now it, my stepper motor should start to miss steps here. It actually cut 20 threads per inch at 700 RPM, which is good. So uh, in order to make this fault out, I changed it to 75 thou per rev and bumped it up to 900 RPM. So right now you'll see what happens if you exceed the ability of the machine when you program the thread. So it's going to start to cut the thread cycle right now. And right there, it's just going to skip steps. And keep backing out. Okay, so that's what happens when you exceed the ability of the stepper motor. Okay, obviously you can get your RPMs up pretty high and still make a good thread. So um, the software is really nice. The optical encoder readout is really good. The synchronization is great. Um, so that your your threading cycle have fun.